Welcome fathers who are looking to inspire their kids and become fearless. This is the Become a Fearless Father show and I'm your host, Klaas van Oosterhout. I'm a father of two boys, husband and entrepreneur. This show is created to teach you how to take control and enjoy the most difficult job you've ever faced, fatherhood. I'm going to keep it real and share real life experience. A heads up, there is no magic pill. You will have to put in the hours, sweat and tears to achieve victory. Are you ready to improve your health, wealth, relationships, knowledge and become the hero your family needs you to be? I know you are. So get your pen and paper ready and let's become fearless fathers together. All right, so here we are. Uh, I'd like to welcome Adrian. Thanks for, uh, for being here. Uh, welcome to become a fearless father. It's an honor to have you uh, as my guest. So let's start off by getting to know you a little bit better and tell us all about you. I uh, appreciate that. Yeah, happy to be here. So uh, a little bit about me, what I do uh, right now, I, I work with clients and run a podcast. So that's my main business that I run. Uh, I, my podcast is called Your Nutrition Prescription. Uh, I use that basically Monday through Friday show to educate people about uh, alternative health uh, options. Um, so just learning more about what you can do to keep yourself well and, and avoid, uh, you know, diseases and, and having to get on medication and all that. So that, that's what I do uh, as far as my podcast goes, work with clients who mostly are dealing with chronic health issues. My background, I have a PhD in nutrition, uh, so I'm not a medical doctor, but I, I use nutrition and nutritional supplements and lifestyle to help people get off of a lot of medications and and really get healthy without without having to get on drug after drug and, and just continue to deal with health issues that that are related to diet and, and nutritional deficiencies and and lifestyle that, that can't really be solved with a pill excellent that sounds fantastic um, that's all that's what everybody needs right at least um, I, I, what I, I believe everyone needs. <laughs> yeah, no, but I, I, I definitely agree with you. And I don't agree with you from your perspective, but more from like a, a human, a father perspective. That's, that's what uh, we need. Uh, we, we're going to talk about this a little bit more, but you notice that people, uh, well, let's start with telling you a little bit. I just told you I'm in the south of Spain on vacation I'm at the beach. We went this morning and I like to look at people, look around, see, you know, how healthy are people? And I looked around today, especially now because we have this interview. And man, I gotta tell you, people are fat. People are out of shape. And it's like, it's not that difficult. I mean, it's it's mentally maybe at the beginning really difficult, but it's not that difficult. So let's dive a little bit more in that. So what I'd like to start off with is, you know, um, what does your vision look like in regards to living a healthy life? And what kind of systems do you have in place to make sure you live according to your high standards of living healthy and avoiding what you mentioned earlier, medicines and drugs? So uh, my vision for myself, I mean, I can't even imagine where we're going to be with medical technology by the time, because um, I'm, I'm 31 right now. So mm -hmm. I look at, you know, 50, 60 years from now where are we going to be with medical technology and maybe even being able to keep ourselves almost uh, age free for a while. So I think there's a lot of possibilities in the future uh, as far as really understanding, because right now we're just learning so much about the human body. It's incredible. Uh, and we're able, like we're, we're able to regenerate whole, uh, whole organs like from stem cells nowadays. Uh, and, and just incredible stuff from the conventional medicine perspective, but then also learning more about how we function and how we our bodies interact with nutrition better. So, you know, long-term vision, I want to be around. I want to be doing uh, what I love, which is spreading and trying to help uh, this message along of getting people to to go back to eating real food, but also I mean, I think my primary message that I want to spread is more not relying on your doctor to keep you and your family well. Because if you do that, and I know internationally is a little bit different, but in the United States and in most countries that I've looked at, 
uh, you know, in the United States and Canada. I've worked with clients from Australia, clients from uh, from London, and, and most people are not getting a high quality of state of the art healthcare of like really looking at what's going on with your health. Uh, you know, if you have a gastrointestinal issue, they're not looking at the microbiome because they don't that 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 technology has is too new for medical practice to implement um and and it's just behind and i'm seeing too many people get really improper health care and putting their faith in uh you know in their medical doctor to be able to solve their problems and i see it the most with gastrointestinal issues hormone imbalances where people just get put on medication they don't i mean i know most people will just take the medication that's fine. I understand that, but they're just not even given the option of like, look, this is nutritionally focused. Like this is a nutritional disease and we need to get you to change your diet. Uh, so that's the thing that I want to push forward is people understanding more about those options, about where to find people who can help them with nutrition, nutritional supplements, with rebalancing their gut, with getting their hormones balanced, with getting energy back if they have chronic fatigue, because relying on pills is really, it sends them down a really bad cycle. And most of my clients have been going to medical doctors and, and getting on multiple medications. Uh, and most of them are on, you know, four, five, six different medications. Uh, and it's been, you know, a dozen years and they're just getting worse and worse and, and, and there's no end to it. Uh, so we know how to improve those people now uh, we know how to start to rebuild the health from the ground up uh, and I want more people to understand uh, where to find that information how to find those practitioners and how to really get the highest quality care on both ends of the spectrum you know uh, conventional medicine your doctor that 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 whole realm is really good when you get in a car wreck or if you have a major disease where you might die tonight and you need a, a antibiotic, but uh, to keep you well, it just doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't help you avoid Alzheimer's, doesn't help you avoid heart disease, doesn't help you avoid cancer. Uh, it doesn't help you do those things. And, and everyone needs a space to learn how to do that uh, if, if you want to live a long and healthy life. Exactly. Wow, fantastic. It, it seems from, from what you just explained, you, you really have already uh, a clear purpose in life is is that a good assumption i i, I love yeah. it i love i love listening um to you explaining this i think it's very important and i hope this motivates people to to make that next step and what you see seek out that person hey sorry for the interruption i know you're really enjoying the show just want to make sure if you're liking this information please subscribe and then press the like button and also, go visit becomeafearlessfather.com. You get the opportunity to share your biggest challenge at the moment as a father. And it gives me the opportunity to try and help you overcome this. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of the show. Uh, it's not a question that I've written down, but I actually want to ask you about that. Because what I've noticed is that a lot of people just... When they find out, like, okay, I got to do something, they just do it by themselves. And they don't seek out, because there's a lot of professionals out there that are qualified such as yourselves what do you think makes people not actually look for the easy thing and that's you know talk to you because you got all the experience you got all the knowledge do you think what is that missing thing for people to say okay i'm gonna search out the adrians in the world and and see how they can help me well part of it is um i think part of it is that people just don't know that there's another option like we have been culturally indoctrinated in the fact that there is one way to to care for your health your health care you know it's where you get your health care from your health care practitioners uh and and having an alternative source outside of that even your doctor a lot of times and now we're seeing a, a revolution where a lot of doctors are being more open-minded to it especially the younger doctors but even most doctors are saying nutrition is worthless uh that's not going to help you and the clients that I work with, they go back to their doctors and they're just, they're blown away. They don't, they don't know how you, this could possibly happen. And it's like, this is just application of nutrition and simple fundamentals of the way that the body works. 
the person's probably missing B vitamins, they have a gut imbalance, they're, they have too much mercury in their system because they have, uh, they have mercury fillings, or you know, there's so many just things that we just can easily look at, and there's a lot of research that shows us that these things impact the way that someone's body works. Like if someone's drinking tap water, maybe they're just having a, a, a fluoride expo exposure that can create some negative side effect, and not saying that that's a cause of, of disease, but it's a contributing factor. And we need to really look at lifestyle from a holistic perspective, you know, stress levels. Teaching someone how to manage stress is one of the most important parts of what I do is saying, look, I can just see that you're, you know, starting your day very stressfully. You're just running out the door. You got all your kids. You're not giving yourself any time for you. You know, you need, we need to focus on going to sleep a little bit early, getting up earlier. How many times does your doctor talk to you about that? But that's one of the most important parts of your health. So these things matter. And, and the reason that I'm so passionate about it is because I've just had some experiences myself. And I think everyone has where when I was a kid, I was sick all the time. And the doctors never asked my parents about like my home environment. And it kind of come to find out later on that, that there was just mold in my home. Uh, and, and this was like five or six years of just antibiotics all the time because I was always sick. It was an upper respiratory infection or some type of ear infection. I got hepatitis. I was just sick all the time. It's like, this isn't normal. Like for a kid to be that sick, to be on allergy medication all the time, to have asthma and all of my brothers were the same way. Um, and it's just because we lived in an apartment that was mold infested. And I've had those situations where I've had clients come to me and friends come to me and they're having children who have respiratory issues and they're going for all these surgeries, all these medications. And I'm like, you need to get your air quality evaluated. And then when they do that, it's, they find out there's mold. And it's like, well, that's the first place you have to look. If there's a respiratory issue, what is your child breathing in all day? Um, it just makes sense. But for some reason, or just, it's just the way that their training is that when you go to your medical doctor, they're seeking a symptom to prescribe a medication for, and they are taught how to prescribe medications for certain symptoms. And they're really good at that. But if you want someone to really identify a solution, you need someone that's going to look at the entire picture and not just say, okay, we well, have asthma. Let's put you on uh, immunomodulators that, that, that shut down your immune system so they don't attack your lungs and whatever's irritating your lungs just keeps irritating your lungs, but we just shut down the response that the immune system has uh, that causes uh, the, bron the bronchial uh, constriction in the uh, asthma. It just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it keeps the economy alive, no? What the doctors are doing. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I mean, it does. Yeah, uh, it keeps that portion of the economy alive. But uh, I'm, I'm more concerned about keeping people alive. So, so uh, that's why I took an alternative route. Clearly, uh, the the financial, um, the financial income that I that I make doing what I do, because I'm early on is not what I could have done if I would have went the other route. But, uh, but I'm building a business around more of a movement. So, uh, you know, I think I'll make it work out for myself. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. That's, um, I think it's the right path. Um, so we talked a little bit about this already. You know, there's so much information out everywhere in regards to living healthy. Um, it's, well, for me at least, when I'm starting to look a little bit on, on certain things, it's so difficult to know exactly, you know, what information is right, what what do I need to believe now, and, and what actually works for me, because we all, in the end, we're all individuals. And um, so is there a way to tell in, in a little bit in general, you know, what, what should someone focus on when they're like, okay, yeah, I really need, you know, it's enough. My belly, my health, it's enough. I need to really come around. I need to start doing something. So what are maybe the first steps? So what is that somebody should really take a look at to, to, to start implementing first changes? Okay, so first I'm going to address the first part uh, where you were talking about all the conflicting information. Uh, there is, but a lot of those people are 
they're they're just it's beliefs. They're not really telling the truth. But we're we're seeing we're seeing more and more people who just who are just trying to help people learn uh, the truth. Uh, and that's what I do on my podcast. And there's another, a lot of other really good ones as well. But um, definitely recommend tuning into my podcast because I, I talk about both sides of everything. Uh, when it comes to like the first things you can do, uh, if you're not moving, you got to get moving. Uh, that's one of the first things you can do. If you're currently not sleeping, well, you got to get that. You got have to get the sleep uh, just b- dialed in. Because if you try to start exercising a lot and changing your diet and you're not sleeping, and you're just going to burn yourself out. And it might help you sleep. Uh, it might like improve your sleep, but sleep is just a very important one that you need to work on early on if it's very bad. Now, if you're just, you know, you say you're getting like six hours or something, that's okay. But if you're only getting a few hours of sleep, that needs to be something that's dialed in because I, I work with people who are in that boat and that's the first thing we have to go with. Um, so it depends on the individual even from that perspective. But my favorite thing, is smoothie so uh smoothies are just super easy to digest they're like pre-digested for you and there you can just get so much nutrition you can put whatever you want in there um i use it that's what i eat for breakfast every day and that's what all my clients do uh that's what pretty much everyone who follows me that that kind of applies my nutritional principles because uh it's super easy to digest so normally you have to break down food but you, when you blend it, it's already pre-digested, especially with the greens and the berries. Those have a lot of fiber, so those can those can be difficult to digest in the morning, and that's why it's good to have them as a smoothie. And then you can just make a very balanced meal, quick, on the go. Um, so that's what I, I usually recommend as like a first step. Uh, another really important thing that a lot of people are missing, uh, drinking enough water. So making sure that you drink a, a big glass of water in the morning. Uh, just start your day. If you go straight to coffee, I promise you that if you start with like 24 to 32 ounces of water uh, before coffee, you're, you're going to feel more energy uh, just from adding that water in the morning. So that's another really big one. So if you did your water and even if you're having coffee, if you are uh, you know one of those people that are drinking coffee, then you have your coffee and then you can have your smoothie as well, like right in that time and just have that liquid before uh like that's your first part of the day uh so just a smoothie um as far as like general guidelines i'd say when you sit down to a meal just make sure that at least 50 percent of it is vegetables um so if you have a no matter what you're eating if half of your plate is vegetables uh you're gonna be good if you have digestive issues you probably don't want to eat too many raw vegetables. Um, I can't, I actually, I don't want to go into too much detail about all that because I, I work with a lot of people with a lot of specific issues, so it's hard for me to give general recommendations, but I'll stick there. Uh, just make sure that you're eating a lot of vegetables. That's one of the best things you can do. Um, clearly, like, just getting away from the, the packaged foods and the processed foods, uh, you know, even, even the brands that claim to be healthy and even the ones that, you know, are good, where it's like, oh, it's only four ingredients, and it really is only four ingredients. Like, it is only four ingredients, but it would be better <laughs> to just eat uh, eat banana, you know, um, something real. Now that's great. That's awesome advice. Um, that's what I was looking for a little bit. The the the, the general advice, uh, of course, as we mentioned before, in the end, um, your clients, it's going to be individual. <laughs> Sorry, individual. Uh, that's what you get when you're on vacation. Then you know you, you can't keep them away. Um, but anyway, you, you you can say something in general for individual. Individuals just have to have their own nutrition plan. It depends on completely that day. How does it go? When do you wake up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the perfect. Yeah, I love it. I wrote it down: fifty percent vegetables and twenty to twenty-four ounces of water and a smoothie. That sounds great. Uh, a little bit later, we're going to talk about the little ones because um, I'd like to hear more uh, in that regard. But um, in regards to, um, to, to nutrition, you know, um, most people have somewhat of an idea about how to eat healthy in the end. I mean, you mentioning, yeah, um, you, you basically need to stay, stay away from prepackaged foods and all those kind of things. That, that's in the end, it's, it seems a kind of like, like, like common, common sense. Um, so, you know, what, what do you think are the reasons um, 
that that you have heard so far from all your clients and, and people that talk to you in regards to um, you know why they don't stick to to the the, the basics you know to, to stay at least somewhat healthy um, it, it's habits and environment so if you grew up eating junk food how hard is that for you to make that shift like you have to go to foods that, from foods that were like designed it's like they're drugs they're designed to be highly stimulating they're designed to light up the reward systems in your brain they're designed to be easy to digest they just you know when you put a piece of bread in your mouth it digests in your mouth like it starts to to dissolve in your mouth uh and that's these foods are designed to to do that so if you grew up doing that it's extremely hard to shift and say okay i'm going to start eating uh bell peppers and it's like that doesn't taste like a Cheeto. It's not even the same. Like your brain registers so much more reward from the, from the previous foods that you got used to eating. So that one just requires a massive commitment of saying, I'm going to break the psychological need to have these highly rewarding foods. Um, a lot of people don't really get to the point of making that commitment because they don't really appreciate the the impact that that's going to have on your life and it you know just just to get on that point really quickly like your food is literally what provides you energy and provides the building blocks for your body and your body you're in a completely different body every two years every single one of your cells dies and is regenerated every two years you have to eat well in order to produce a high quality machine that you're going to be walking around in for the for for as long as you're on this earth so you know some people just don't have the uh they don't have the motivation to say i'm going to go through this difficult process of retraining my taste buds and learning how to eat in that way other people i mean one of the other challenges is environment so if you grew up with these habits, it's difficult to change those habits. It's even more difficult to change those habits if the environment that you're in still just heavily promotes those poor habits. So if you work in an environment where everyone goes out to lunch and they go to a fast food restaurant, or someone brings back, uh, there's vending machines and it's cookies and cakes and donuts, and, and it's just not available. It's not as easy to come by. So if you just get hungry in the middle of the day, you can't just go grab a salad. Uh, but you can go to the vending machine and get a cinnamon bun. Uh, so in that regard, the unhealthy food is just so pervasive. And it's just, it's because it's so profitable. You know, these companies uh, make these foods at, for such a small amount. And then they, they, they can make a good profit off it. So they just push it in front of us everywhere. Uh, and so we're surrounded by it. Um, and I don't know, I know it's a little bit less uh, in, in Europe and, and in other parts of the world, but in the United States, like, and especially, I mean, it depends on where you're at in the United States too. But like, if I, if I drive one mile down the road, I pass by like 12 fast food restaurants and it, 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 it's hard to eat well when that's the option that's available. And the other part of it is, uh, money and finances. It just, it's going to cost more. Um, but it's not a cost. It's an investment. Uh, you have to invest in your health or else you're going to be paying for it on the other end by spending money on healthcare. And really you just cannot put a price on, on vitality on being 60 years old and not being in a wheelchair, not being in and out of the hospital, not being in a point where you're going to be in a nursing home because that's the reality. You know, people are getting into their seventies and they're, they're, pretty much disabled uh, on average at that point. Um, I know, and again, I'm speaking from my, my experience with the United States, but that seems to be more the norm. And then I have, I have a lot of the older people that I look up to that I know who live a healthy lifestyle, who've been intentional about that their whole life, and they're in their 70s and 80s, and they're still running, and they're still uh, you know, doing their job. Uh, they're still engaging in intellectual activity. They're still living fully. They're still traveling. They're still completely on their own. And I see that, that, that huge difference. And it just comes down to how you lived your life when you were 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And if you are just 
it doesn't have to be extreme. You don't have to, you know, follow a crash diet to get a six pack or anything like that. But if you are just intentional about what you put into your body, about making sure that you're getting movement every day, about not uh, allowing, you know, too many responsibilities in your life to create too much stress, uh, you, we, you can really increase your odds of, of getting to 60, 70, 80 years old and really still being able to live a full life. So that's, that's my motivation. That's what excites me about, about uh, doing this. Nice. I like that. Um, yeah, especially what you mentioned, and, and hopefully that changes. It's now more like the, the 70, 80-year-olds that, that still seem, um, you know, living like you mentioned and really energetic and everything. Now they're, they're outside of the norm. It's like, wow, that's incredible. What have they done? Now, hopefully we change that until like it's actually the norm like you know hey, we can become 130 easily uh, with our mind and our health intact as long as we yeah stop eating mcdonald's every freaking day of uh, of the week so yeah that makes perfect sense brilliant thanks for sharing that uh, Adrian. Um, all right so let, let's go to the part of, of our kids of course because what you mentioned is like everything is so available um the crap food, so to say, the Cheetos, as you mentioned. So, uh, and you can tell that kids actually eat what their parents are eating. You know, uh, there's not much of a distinction made between the adult and the child and what's given to them. So what's your philosophy on children eating well and what kind of system or maybe even systems would you recommend for fathers to, to use uh, to make sure their kids eat, um, you know, all the right foods they need to grow up healthy and set up what you mentioned, you know, the, the, the basics so they continue that and don't get into the trap that, um, you know, um, we were in, or at least, well, you would get in case probably not, but that, that I was in of, of just continuously eating um, crap food. Yeah, so I think the, the first thing that fathers can do is really just, you have to, you have to do it all yourself. So if you're listening to this, and you're like, well, I want to change my, my nutrition and I'm going to try and I'm going to try to get my whole family on board. And if my whole family doesn't jump on board, then I'm going to, I'm going to not do it either. Uh, that's not the way to go about it. So if you are just wanting to get started and you're already thinking, oh, let me think about how I can get my wife and kids on board. Um, don't do that. Focus on yourself. Focus on learning and, and, and implementing these habits with yourself because you can't do this at the same time is motivating your wife convincing your kids because no one wants to change your kids are going to complain about not getting mcdonald's your wife's going to complain about not getting to eat her donuts and and you're going to also just cave in because you're going to have that added pressure of trying to bring your whole family along so if your family is on board and they, they want to change and you're already like your family's already kind of doing a lot of great things, then that, that message isn't for you. But I know I, I work with a lot of men who are in that situation and their main issue is they're trying to bring their family along and they're using their family as an excuse because they can't carry the whole load. And they're just saying, well, it's too hard when my wife doesn't do it. Or it's too hard when my kids are eating Chick-fil-A and I have to take them there. Uh, so number one, get your own behaviors really nailed down. Make it a priority. Show your family that it is a priority. Um, because even if you have been doing it for a couple of weeks and you're trying to get your family out to make changes, they, they're not going to really trust that that's, you're going to stick to that for, for a long period of time two weeks in, you know, three weeks in. If they see you doing it for nine weeks and you change your life and you have more energy and you show up better and you're, you're a better husband and a better father and you, you just, everything that's going to come from taking better care of your health, they see and you express to them, that's when you're going to be able to be in a better position to help your family make changes. Um, so that's where I think is really important to, to consider is don't let your family hold you back. Now, as far as specific tips, uh, for getting your kids to eat healthier, smoothies are my favorite. Uh, again, it just kids like them. You can figure out how to get a kid to like it because you can put peanut butter or almond butter 
or you can do different types of berries. Uh, you can always sneak spinach in there. Uh, I've seen most kids will eat spinach uh, if you put it into a smoothie because it doesn't change the, the texture in it and it doesn't change the taste at all. Uh, so smoothies have been huge. Um, and, and you just, with your kids, what I've always done is I try to find like a couple of vegetables that he'll eat, my son will eat, because vegetables are the key to health. Like vegetables, uh, a variety of vegetables, um, you know, they're going to be low in calories. They're going to be uh, just nutrient dense. And so I try to find the vegetables that my son will eat and I'll give him a lot of those. So right now he's eating a lot of broccoli. So I'll put broccoli in every meal for him. Uh, he really likes potatoes. So I'm okay with like, we'll do some potatoes uh, pretty much every day for him because he, he really likes them. Potatoes have some beneficial health qualities that I like. Uh, but I, I just, you know, I just tried it my best to feed him real food and I give him treats because he knows, I mean, he's in a, he's in a, in a uh, school, which is uh, the way that all of them are. And it's just, it's just not healthy food. So he sees everyone else eating like pizza and chicken nuggets and uh, French fries. And, and he sees that every single day. So I, that, that, I have to be a little bit less strict with trying to keep his nutrition like, uh, you know, sometimes I have to take him to go eat something that I know he'll he'll enjoy because he's asking about it all the time. He has everyone around him eating that. He knows that stuff tastes good. Um, and it's just the environment that I'm in. And that's where it goes back to environment. Uh, if I was in an environment where he never saw that, it would be way easier. Uh, and it just makes it harder. Uh, it may, and it definitely makes it harder. But, you know, once once you get to the point where you really want to work with your kids, uh, it really is to working with your kids figuring out what works uh for them figuring out what they like and it's going to be highly individualized my son changes his taste buds like every two months uh he he used to love mushrooms like three months ago that was one of his favorite foods he won't touch a mushroom right now and it just he goes through phases like that and it's hard um but but i just i'm committed he knows that that we just don't keep that stuff in the house so when you get to that point where you've changed your habits and then your family has followed your lead, which is a way that the only way that it's going to happen, you're not going to pull them along with you. You have to, you know, set that lead. Uh, you have to lead uh, by example and then they'll follow. And if you've done that, uh, you can just get all the stuff out of the house and it becomes a lot easier because you have control in your home. Like I can't, I went and there's things you can't control. Like I went to a birthday party last weekend two birthday parties so my son had cake two days in a row that's not gonna be normal um he was asking for uh sweets like the next couple of days i could tell he was craving it um but i just he knows it's like no that's not that's not something that you eat outside of that context and he's learned that over time because that's just the way that i fed him uh since, since he was born mm -hmm. well I'll, i yeah uh... Um, loving it. Thank you for that. Um, especially, of course, the focus on yourself is so important. Uh, that's something I'm focused on as well. It's like, if you want to be a good father, the first thing you have to do is focus on yourself and not on your yeah. kids. So um, that, that's a nice uh, interconnection with that and, and lead by example. Yeah, not make somebody do something, but first show somebody by doing it and then have somebody. It's, it's also easy to make the change. So Thanks for that. It's 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 um, absolutely great advice. Uh, you took away one of my uh, my questions in regards to uh, environment. Uh, one of the challenges that I'm having is is with the uh, with the playground, and you mentioned that already. It's like okay, yeah, you you, you can't control every single environment. So um, thanks for putting that in the in the reply as well. Um, so you know there there's. Um, so much crappy food you just mentioned that there's so much crappy food out there and so easily to buy and especially for kids um and they're so uh, in the in the end they're so smart you know they make everything wonderful colors and beautiful little <coughs> and everything that makes people the kids just walk in the store and it's always at their height so they see it right away um <laughs> sorry about that um I'll, I'll talk to you about why he's crying in a minute too. Um, so 
what what actually um you know yeah thanks for that <laughs> um you know what what can make people make sure to um you know make sure that they eat healthy you know what do people have to be aware of in regards to um you know when they go out into the shop you know what's actually healthy what what for example do you look for on on the labels on on certain things uh, what, what what advice can you give on that aspect so you don't want a lot of foods with labels uh you want to stay on the outside of the grocery store i'm sure that's how it's arranged in in uh, in Europe as well as like the outside of the grocery store is going to be the fruits, the vegetables, the, the, the meats, the cheeses, um, which I'm not a big fan of, but I'll throw that in there. Uh, the meats, the cheeses, the, the eggs, um, and, and that's, you know, some grains, some beans or some rice, that type of thing. Uh, nuts and seeds and other, other categories, but you know, that's, that's where you want your diet to come from. And, and if that makes up, 80% of your diet, um, doesn't matter what you do outside of that. Like that's going to be, that's going to be step one and huge step one, because that's a big step is to get to where, you know, those whole foods makes up 80% of your diet. So you're making stuff at home with those foods. Like for example, I have a smoothie in the morning and then I have some type of lunch that's maybe a, I don't do salads that often, but a lot of times it's going to be leftovers. It's going to be vegetables and some type of protein or some type of uh, beans. And that's 80% of my diet. Sometimes I'll go out to eat and I'll get pasta and bread and, uh, you know, different, uh, less healthy foods. Um, but that's a small percentage of my diet. And, uh, you know, if you're just getting started, I recommend higher than that, like more 90%. And if you have health issues, sometimes you have to be like 100% consistent. Uh, you know, some of my clients, we have to, we have to pretty much be close to a hundred percent to get them really well. Uh, but you know, once you get to your ideal body weight and you feel great, you can, you can give yourself space, but as long as you're eating 80% real food, home cooked, um, you know, or if you have good options for like restaurant food, but most people don't, um, most people, if you're going to a restaurant, it's going to be the cheapest ingredients. They're going to throw oil all over it, cheap oil all over it, all, anything that they make. Uh, so, so that's why you have to keep that one to a minimum and, and prepare most of your food at home. And if you follow that, uh, you're going to be good. Excellent. Great. Thanks for that. Most people, uh, just on that one. Yeah. Um, and, and thanks for the, for the explanation about 80%. That gives a, a good, clear uh, idea as well on you know what people should uh, should look for um what in regards to um in regards to 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 meats and um and fish um and and and, and birds what what's your philosophy on that and what what should people look for uh, and watch out for so uh my thought is that most people are probably eating too much meat right now uh, in the current landscape of everyone going low carb and trying to eat a lot of protein. Uh, you know, meat helps you. It, it does provide great protein, provides, uh, keeps you full and, and really helps you lose weight. But um, I think meat is more, you know, four to five ounces on a meal and the rest should be vegetables and maybe some beans or maybe some, some type of avocado or something like that where I think a lot of people were eating probably too much meat. Um, and that's mainly, you know, again, based on my experiences, I live in like the Southern United States and most people are eating a lot of meat and a lot of uh, all different types of like, you know, bunch of beef and that type of thing. I think that's having a negative impact on a lot of people's health. Um, as far as, uh, you know, beyond that. So I think that the portion, you know, a little bit of meat, maybe one to two times per day, you know, four to five ounces, four to six ounces, that should be about the standard for most people. Um, if you're more active, then it's probably going to be a little bit more than that. Um, but from there, you want to get high quality sources. So as naturally raised as possible. So if it's beef, it's, you want it grass fed. If it's 
you want it pasture raised, you want you want as close to the animal living in its natural habitat as possible. Because when we buy uh, commercially produced, you know, giant mega farm produced uh, animal flesh and eggs, it's kind of like buying processed food. Like it's taking what is a natural food and adulterating it by giving these animals antibiotics and hormones and feeding them genetically modified corn and soy and wheat, the things that they should not be eating and just like trying to fatten them up and keep them alive with drugs. Uh, that, eating a lot of that type of uh, meat, don't recommend. Uh, so, so definitely trying to get as close to natural as possible and, and really making sure that you're not overdoing it with, with meat consumption. Excellent, great, thanks for that. That was a question that uh, popped in my head because something I'm, I'm sometimes struggling a little bit with is okay so what what should you know what else should you eat besides uh, just eating uh, vegetables of course and, and, and fruit uh, so I appreciate that um, you know a question that's not just in regards to nutrition just in general for you you know um, of course you know our children learn from us they, they look up to us you know we, we're we are, or we definitely should be, <laughs> their biggest example and inspiration. And I'm just wondering from, from your, you, you got a, a younger son, what are some of the things that, that you started to do different now since you became a father as to become a better role model for, for, your, uh, for your son? Oh man, that's a, that's a difficult question to answer. So uh, I, I didn't mention this earlier. So I'm a, I'm a, single father of a five-year-old he's almost five okay. uh, i have full custody of my son he lives with me he he's with me 95 percent of the time mm -hmm. uh so when i got custody of him i a lot changed at that point because you know before it was uh i saw him as much as i could i was involved in his life uh for sure but he didn't live with me i didn't have the primary influence he was influenced by his mom and uh you know it was just a, a stressful situation of, of me having to try to be a father from, from far away. Uh, but when he came to live with me, uh, a lot changed there. Uh, so at that time we were living in uh, San Diego and I, I worked at a university, uh, that was three years ago. So right about three years ago, uh, so we moved, he, he came to live with me right before he turned two. Uh, and I just, I had the, I, that was the point where I bared like the full responsibility of like, man, I, I have, I have to take care of this kid. I have to set a good example. I have to raise him like I'm doing it on my own. Um, and that is when I like decided to leave my job uh, and, and start a business and create a podcast. And um, I think one of the biggest things is me uh, at before I was settling for lower than what I thought was my true potential. And I was, comfortably okay with that but then when he came to to live with me uh i i was no longer okay with him seeing me do something that didn't light me up like now he knows what i do at five years old and he i i'm setting a good example through what i've done it was like leaving my job and being able to and another big thing there was like i wanted to be present uh, I wanted to be able to, anytime he had something going on with school or sports, I wanted to be able to be there. And that's one of the big reasons that I left my job uh, and, and started my own business. And, and I also just knew that I could. I knew that it was going to be successful as long as I, I, I applied what I had learned in, in, in the business world and created an online, uh, you know, online programs and some valuable, uh, put valuable content out there. So you know, that was one of the biggest things there is like, it forced me to stop living below my potential and settling for what was easy rather than what I knew I could do. Well, so your son made you take that next step pretty much. That's yeah. I mean, so I went into work one day and uh, I asked for, for some time off for Christmas. Uh, 
uh, to be able to like take him to Texas to see my family because I was living in California and and they told me no and that was like in my head when, when they told me no in my head like I made the decision to leave the job and I'm like I you know I, I have a PhD in nutrition I understand nutrition I can teach it I can help people one-on-one -on -one. I can provide you know value so much value as a when I put my skills out there that it's just the building process like I was fearing that I knew it was going to take two years to build it um, before it, I was able to you know provide a salary and, and get back to where I was uh, so that's where the fear was before um, but just I was motivated by knowing that I wanted to be in control of my life uh, because I didn't want to have to go to work over going to my son's you know school play or whatever it is like I never want someone to tell me that I have to go in and do so, and, and go, show up somewhere rather than you know being able to be present at what's important yeah exactly I'm glad you mentioned that that's that's something uh, that for me was also a decision to be like yeah I'm done working. I don't want anybody any more control in my time. I want to have the discussion in my own head saying, can I go? Yes, no. And then make that decision instead of somebody else just saying flat out no and you just have to swallow it. So um, I hope that that's a message as well that other fathers are going to pick up because I think it's so important. I heard somebody say, and I like that word, um, or I read it somewhere, um, entrepreneur dad. And I found that and um, was like, yep. That's, I like that because it's, it's what I think any father should, um, yeah, should do. Become an entrepreneur dad and that way have so much free time and the possibility to completely be there instead of once they turn 18 be like, where did the time go? And I missed so much of, you know, my, my kid's life. So yeah, brilliant. I appreciate you, you sharing that. So. This is me asking you a question as a, as a, a father of my youngest son that just came in here. Um, um, I, I, everybody that speaks a little Spanish um, knows what he just did <laughs> right next to my desk. Um, he has a lot of problem. Um, he, we just started with him going to, to, the, to his own toilet, sitting down doing his thing. He doesn't do, he doesn't make shit well and it hurts. Um, so he has a lot of constipation problems and I was just wondering, and this might be too difficult as in, in one thing, but what are some of the things that uh, me as a father, and, and I know there's more fathers dealing with this, this problem. What are some of the things that he should eat or drink that will help him, um, take a shit easier? So yeah. Does he have anything else going on? Um, no, he's really healthy. Okay. He has way more, way too much energy. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, he, he's really healthy. He's great. Okay. So, um, you know, in that regard, I would say you, there's probably something causing that. So something that he's eating that's like a, a food that he's not digesting well. Uh, a lot of times that's, that's wheat. Is he eating a lot of wheat? Um, as in, like, like I know daily. Like bread. Um, he eats some bread. He eats a lot of rice. Um, like there will be always like pasta or rice mixed in with his vegetables and like a meat. Okay. Um, could be the rice. Is he eating? How much meat is he eating? Um, depends on the day, but um, yeah, how much you'd like to know in, in, in answer, I can't say that. The thing is, his brother, his, his his older brother is five, and he pretty much gets the same as his older brother in regards to meat size, for example. Okay, okay, and then um, what else? What else is like? Name some of the primary components of his diet. Bananas. Bananas. <laughs> he loves bananas. He loves apples. He likes uh, at the moment as well uh, grapes. Uh, so we try, oh, I've understood that grapes are pretty good for him. So we try to give that as much as possible. Um, we try to make sure he drinks water as much as possible instead of drinking those juices. Uh, uh -huh. 
um, and yeah, so it's it's fruit in the morning, and sometimes oh, and that's that's a mix. Sometimes he gets those prepackaged croissants and prepackaged muffins and those kind of things as well. But in general, his his diet is, as far as I can tell, pretty uh, basic, normal. Yeah. Diet yeah. Diet. So, um, so there's a couple of things you can do that that will help symptomatically. Uh, okay. like magnesium citrate. So there's a product called natural calm and, and that loosens the stool a little bit and that's safe for kids. So you could give him uh, a serving is two teaspoons and that's 325 milligrams, I believe. And you could give him like a teaspoon and then work up a little bit higher and see if that helps. I would only give him that at night because it does, it, it, it'll help him sleep better as well. So okay. you come at night, and he might he might uh, go to the restroom in the morning. Uh, if not, you can increase the dose, and and maybe he'll go the next day. Um, most other things I don't really recommend using with kids because they're stimulants and and like things with caffeine that mm-hmm. will actually stimulate the the movement down there. Um, you sure he's drinking enough water? Um, well, sure, sure is hard, of course. Well, now for the summer, we're here. So we make sure, and he asks for it. Like they have a bottle of water at their bed, and he all the time asks for drinking water. But of course, he goes to school as well, and there I can't, I can't control it. Okay, okay. So that makes it uh, makes it difficult. But how how much should a, like how do you know if your child like what's enough, what's or what's not enough water for? I mean, if it, if if someone's let's say your kid's uh, forty pounds and twenty ounces a day of water. Okay. Twenty five, thirty. But 20 at the minimum um but you know it doesn't because dehydration is a, a a common cause of of constipation uh, mm-hmm. lack of fiber but it sounds like he's getting plenty of fiber uh so that doesn't sound like a problem uh the magnesium helps but that's not necessarily doesn't really get it a cause of what's going on um food sensitivities can be another one um that could be causing di- the, the constipation so if he has a sensitivity to like wheat or, or eggs or, or dairy and he's having that on a regular basis, that can, that can cause uh, just, it can disrupt the function of the, of the uh, GI tract. So that's another one that, that could be a possibility. Um, that one's hard to tell because you have to do some testing. Uh, yeah. So like to, to identify food sensitivities, you got to do a test. And then if you think that there might be like some bacterial overgrowth or, or anything like that, you can do a test, but it doesn't sound like it because there will be some other issues. Really. If there's like some bacterial overgrowth or, or something like that, um, food sensitivity sounds like it's probably more likely. Um, one thing you can do is cut out a lot of the bread products and like uh, cut out a lot of the carbs in general and see if that helps. All right, great. Well, thanks for that. I appreciate your advice. I'm going to follow them. Um, I'm going to definitely pay more attention as well to the to the water. Um, so thanks, and and everybody watching, I apologize for <laughs> for for making it a little personal as well. But hey, you got to take advantage of uh, having somebody as specialized as Adrian here. So um, let's just say, because because um, you know, re- reading books is something that I've, I've completely changed. I never read before, but now I'm just digesting a lot of books and, and, and getting tons of information out there that's helping me as a father, as an entrepreneur, and, and everything in between. What kind of books could you recommend fathers that will help them better understand what they should eat and get a, get a good understanding of how they can plan their meals? Um. Books are hard. It's hard for me to recommend a book because a lot of them are selling a diet. Like most of the popular books out there are selling like one diet or the other and they're, they're missing information. Uh, there's, there's a lot of authors that I can recommend. Um, Joel Furman. Uh, he's a, he's a really, he read some really good books. He's a vegan though. So you have to kind of take it with context. He's, he's biased towards veganism. Uh, there's another guy, Mark Hyman, that writes a lot of good books that he's kind of, uh, an advocate of the paleo movement. So he kind of is biased towards that direction. Uh, so that's the problem with most books is they don't really, 
I've never seen a book, and I pl- I'm actually planning to write one in the next year, um, that has given people both sides. Has said, okay, like, for example, coconut oil. That's been in the news recently because uh, some professors said that it was poison. Um, coconut oil is harmful, can be harmful for people who have high cholesterol because it drives cholesterol up and cholesterol does lead to heart disease um, if you have high cholesterol particles in your blood. Uh, But it also has antifungal, antibacterial properties and it positively uh, affects the immune system. So there's two sides to the story with pretty much everything and most people aren't telling both sides. Uh, So those two authors, I like, they're, they're the closest to the middle of like really being um, open-minded towards other, you know, not being a vegan and open-minded towards really not following the very high fat life. Um, so, so that's a good balance. I haven't found a good book that really uh, covers, you know, the whole uh, spectrum of like really helping people figure out where to eat from a, without the bias behind it. Um, so, so it's hard for me to recommend that there. I highly recommend checking out my podcast though. So I, obviously most of you listen to podcasts uh, I do 50-minute show five days a week. Um, I'm actually starting to do some interview shows. It'll be about 30 minutes, but uh, th- that's where you can really learn very quickly a lot of different topics and exactly my philosophy, what you need to be eating, um, you know, different smoothie recipes, talk about snack ideas, talk about different specific health conditions like GI issues. So, uh, you know, if you are dealing with constipation, I have an episode on constipation, uh, but it's not geared towards kids. So there's a little bit different, uh, different recommendations there, but yeah. So, uh, that's another place that I would highly recommend checking out is just checking out my podcast and it's called your nutrition prescription. Excellent. Thanks for that. And, um, yeah, I guess you just have to come out with your book real quick so we can, uh, we can get that one. Uh, yeah, I love to combine my learning intake, so to say with podcasts, reading books and also watching videos on uh, YouTube. Um, what else? What if, if people have questions, you mentioned your podcast, but you know, what if people want to reach out to you or, you know, get, get more information about you, what, where can they reach you? So if you type in into the Facebook, um, either Facebook or Instagram, you can type in your nutrition prescription. If you're doing it on Instagram, you do it with no spaces. And then if you're doing it on Facebook, you can just type in your nutrition prescription and you'll find the page for my Instagram and Facebook. I share a lot of information there. I, I share my podcast sometimes, but I share other information as well. And then dradrianchavez.com and that's D-R adrianchavez.com. And that's where uh, you can book an appointment, book a 15 minute consultation, see, see some of the other content that I have. I post I also have a YouTube channel where I post some, some videos as well. I'm still kind of working on that, but um, you know, I'm out there putting out a lot of different information uh, on different topics. And you know, my goal, I don't, I don't care about whether or not someone wants to go keto or low carb or vegan or uh, I just want to help people understand how to do it properly and really how to take care of your health from a more broad perspective, because nutrition is just one part of it. Um, you know, the way you're getting your health care, whether or not you're on a bunch of medications, uh, the water you're drinking, your sleep, your stress levels, all of that is also uh, extremely important. So, you know, getting your nutrition right, but also making sure that you're not neglecting these other factors as well. Great. Well, thanks. Um, recommend everybody checking it out. Um, I've really enjoyed this, uh, Andrew. Thank you very much. It was very educational. I learned tons. So I really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to be on my show. Um, from this, I'll probably have uh, over time more questions and uh, hopefully we can, uh, we can, I would love to have you on again, maybe in a year or two, especially when your book comes out so we can present that to, uh, to all fathers out there. Um, I, I love your philosophies and your systems. I hope people enjoyed it. And I wish everybody a fantastic evening, morning or afternoon, whatever you're at. And I um, um, hope to see you soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. No problem. All right, goodbye, peoples. Are you still meeting up with your friends now that you're a father? Kids making you stress out. You got no time for yourself to work out, read, or relax. Can you still remember the time you were hanging out with your friends 
feeling energetic, happy and confident, spending time together and talking about your life and your crazy dreams. You're feeling alone now, don't you? No one to share your challenges with and you're just running around from one storm into the next. Well, it's time to change this now. Join me and the Brotherhood of Fearless Fathers to speak on a weekly basis with like-minded dads to crush your challenges, face your fears with determination, be held accountable and regain control of your life. If you want to become the hero your family needs you to be, then go to becomeafearlessfather.com brotherhood. Looking forward to seeing you on one of our next calls.